Hey guys, this is McCoy Buck, and I'm going to talk about bone dynamics in Anime Studio, and also how they can help create principles of animation for you. So as you can see, this is what your animation will look like without bone dynamics. And this is what it will look like with them added. It's very easy to do, and I will walk you through how to set up your squash and stretch and your overlapping actions in a two-part series. You can download this character for free from my Gumroad page, or if you'd like to support me, you can also pay what you think is fair. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so this is going to be the character that we're going to be using. Uh, his name is Rabbit. He was created by me, and he was rigged by Mike Morris. If you aren't familiar with Mike Morris, I had the opportunity to interview him a few weeks ago, and it was awesome. Um, he is the... He used to be the storyboard artist for The Simpsons. He is now the storyboard artist for Disney. Um, so I'm going to link in the description Mike Morris Tumblr where you can follow him, see all of his awesome artwork, and I will talk a little bit more about him at the end of this tutorial. So this character right here, Rabbit, uh, as you can see there, let's go ahead and turn off our background and the lettering there. You can see that he's made up of bones. So if I just hit control A on my keyboard, it's gonna highlight all the bones. Um, I have some bones that are colored by Mike. He did the ears yellow, the main root bone red, and this is a target bone right here. You can't really see it, but this little circle right there shows us that that's a target bone. Um, this character will be available for download for versions 10 and 11 of Anime Studio. Um, I'll upload it and you can download it from my Gumroad account. Um, if you like the character and you want to download him and support the channel and the group and everything that I do, um, you can donate uh, you can donate to purchase him or you can get it for free if if you don't have any funds or anything that's totally fine. So you can also get this character for free. So, Awesome thing about this character is it's very, very simple. Um, I had a really simple idea and Mike did an awesome job on creating a really simple rig. So if you take a look at the rig itself, you can see that there are all these bones and they're connected back to the main root bone. Um, so you have your ears. If you're familiar with parenting, uh, this is gonna be really familiar to you. Um, and then you have your you're just two main body bones that will also be connected back to that main root bone. So let's go ahead and let's move him around a little bit and see how he moves. So you can see there his ears, everything. I mean, you can pick this thing apart. You can re-rig it if you want, but everything is rigged basically with, um, so if I turn on my bone strength, you can see, I'll turn everything on. It's kind of hard to see actually, but um, everything is basically rigged with the flexi bone binding. Just a really quick way to get things going. Um, doesn't need to be perfect, so he doesn't have like smart bones and things like that set up uh, because I only wanted so many actions. So let me go ahead and play this out. This is with the bone dynamics not applied. So as you can see here in my timeline, I'll pull this up a little bit. I actually had some bone dynamics somehow, but they weren't on. Um, so we can see what's going on. So you have your bone angle channel, and this is just the rotation of your bones. So this is the rotation of all the bones. Uh, you have your bone translation. Let's go ahead and show what an example of that would be. Okay. Oops. So there's our my bone translation. So this is saying for the root bone, this is showing the arc that this root bone will be following. All I did is hit T on my keyboard. So this is actually what I used as I was creating my animation. I knew that, okay, if I jump, there's gonna be some sort of arc. And um, if I hit T on this root bone, you can see the arc that I created. And then I have the bone scale. Now the bone scale is used in a few different places. It's mostly the head. And the reason why I use that is because it creates this little squash effect there. Um, but that's not the full effect that I'm going for. What we're going to go over today is how to do the squash and stretch on your character using bone dynamics. So you're going to create a simple squash and then you're going to exaggerate that tenfold with the bone dynamics. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into it. 
So first off, what I'm gonna do before anything is I'm going to set up my onion skins at my, basically at my key shots, a uh, couple of the middle shops, shots, I'll show you what I mean. So I have my starting position, his landing position, and then as you can see here, this is basically what he looks like when he is normal. So we'll also use that for our onion skin there and then the top portion right here. So what's really cool about Anime Studio is you can use these different onion skins right here. I don't have my outlines on, I just have the colored fills on. I have my relative keyframe off, and then I have my selected layer only, which is totally fine, it's selected for the rabbit. And then I have my draw behind, and I have my forward keyframes. So depending on where I'm at, the forward keyframes will be highlighted in green, the red keyframes will be highlighted in red, as or the the red fills will be highlighted in red for the past um, keyframes. All right. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna focus on volume. So when you're thinking of squash and stretch, think of a something with volume. Think of a water balloon. So something like like a water balloon can squash and it can stretch, and volume is basically the I guess like the amount of space that uh, is taken up inside of an object. So if you think of water inside of a water balloon or water inside of a cup, think of this as like a tall glass. And if you stretch and you shrink that, as far as like the height of it, how is that water gonna be contained? Well, you gotta increase the, <laughs> I guess like the dynamiter, diameter, you're gonna have to increase the volume of the cup um, for it to contain all that water. So let's go ahead and turn on uh, that setting. So I'm going to turn on, I'm gonna select my bone by doing B on the keyboard, select bone. And then I'm going to go my bone constraints. And then I have already my squash and stretch scaling turn on. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this original figure with him squashed down, I have to imagine, okay, what's this gonna look like? So right here, this is in his anticipating move of him jumping up into the air. So let's go ahead and squash him down. Probably about there would look good. So I have to, I have to imagine, okay, so if this top part right here was cut off where he's squashing down, how, how am I supposed to stretch out that volume or that, uh, that space that occupies this object elsewhere? And I think that looks pretty good. Okay, so a lot of this is trial and error. As you're going, you'll be you'll you'll see and you'll be like, oh wait, actually no, that doesn't look good. So we'll see if I run into that is that issue. But I'll leave it right about there. So if you have your character right now and you went through with your onion skin, set it at 0.61. That will be pretty good for now. So now as we're looking at our character throughout this animation, you can see his head is being squished here as well. That volume is also being controlled and that squashing is also being controlled at those key points when I have my bone squished down. Anime Studio does all that for you, so it's pretty cool. So right here you can see, look at the bone at its length as I go to frame uh, around six, seven, you can see that bone is starting to squash down because that's the animation, the preset animation. Um, that I'm already going to include. And all you have to do is just worry about the, the principles of helping Anime Studio help you, I guess, achieve the squash and stretch feature. So that's pretty cool right there. All right. So one of the next things that we're going to do is we're going to look now at our stretch. So as you can see there, so as he jumps up into the air, his body's gonna squash down. And then as he stretches right here, let's go ahead and see what that's all about. So one of the things that you've noticed most likely with the onion skins is it changed that squash in the rest of his bones. So when we go to this position here, that squash right there is already influenced by the, the keyframe that we set for it. So the Let's go ahead and highlight the bone real quick. Select bone. It's still it's still 
affected by that. So that is your squash and stretch scaling at 0.61. So then when it comes down here, that same squash and stretch scaling is applied. But let's go ahead and jump to his bottom portion of his body. Now this one we won't use too much. You can see that the bone, our normal size right here, as he jumps up, it squashes a little bit. So let's go ahead and let's create a little bit more of a squashing effect. So as you can see there, his volume is not being held very well compared to his original uh, volume of his shape. So let's go ahead and stretch that out a little bit. So something like that. And then when he goes and he lands, you can see there that that volume, that stretching is also being kept at around 61 for this character. It looks like 61 is gonna be the magic number. Okay, so let's go ahead and play it out. All right, that looks pretty good. If I'm looking at this, that, that looks pretty good as far as his squashing and stretching capabilities. That's about all you need to do. So that is a really quick way Anime Studio can help you with your squash and stretch of your character. It can automatically do that for you. Remember, all that I had to do is I had to define how far down that bone is going to be squashing. So you can see there. So all I did is I took T on the keyboard and I just adjusted that. And that's going to give me my squashing there. And then when I go to my, when I select my bone and I go to my bone constraints and I use squash and stretch scaling, it's just going to amplify that. Okay. So that is all that that is doing in Anime Studio. Now the other cool thing about squash and stretch is we can do quite the opposite. So now with the character, let's go ahead and turn off our background. When he gets to this point right here, we want him, we want to show that he's actually jumping. If you play out this animation, it kind of like, looks like he's just being lifted off the ground, like some kind of harness or something is just pulling him from the ground. He doesn't look like he's jumping. So how can we create that jumping effect? Well, we have to now do the stretching. We did the squashing, now we gotta do the stretching. The stretching is gonna be done a little bit differently. It's actually going to be done with what are called maximum IK stretching. So let's go ahead and let's play with that a little bit. And the really cool thing about Anime Studio, and I don't know if anybody's found this out, but you can do a lot of things in real time. So I'll show you an example. I go back here to frame zero, and I hit play. I can see my animation playing out, but if I go to my bone constraints and I do my maximum IK stretching, that's, that's, the, that's gonna be the stretching of, I'll show you, it's best, best to show with an example. So if I go to maximum IK stretching and I simply just scroll my mouse wheel up, let's go ahead and watch what that does. Okay, do you see that? His body is starting to stretch out. If I go up to like 30, four. Okay, so right about there is actually kind of that stretchiness, that, that, that feeling that I want to get for this character. So if we go ahead and we turn on our background, so we turn on our background, now you can see what's going on there. Now one of the things you might notice is the bottom of his body kind of wants to ball up a little bit. So if you want to fix that, simply go into that specific keyframe where that squash and stretch, and this is simply where the points are placed on my character. I could adjust this with smart bones, I can adjust it by simple point animation, but I'll just scale down my IK stretching just a little bit. So that probably might be a little bit too much. So something right there. So if we go ahead, turn off our background, keep our onion skins. So you can see that looks pretty good. I mean, as far as the squashing and stretching, keeping the same amount of volume, you can basically see it as the animation plays out. There's the squash, there's the squash, and that's basically it. So that's how you do squash and stretching in Anime Studio. By simply clicking a check mark and playing with some numbers, you can get this effect. Like I said, let's say let's say it's really hard for you to see where exactly you want your squash and stretching to be. Again, you can do all of this in real time. I can easily scroll down these numbers back down 
I can see that, oh, that looks a little weird. Let's go ahead and put a background on it. And let's go ahead and just scale with this a little bit. I'm gonna do squashing and stretching for the bottom. Look at that. See, you can see that little blip. That's because that's being stretched out a lot. So when he hits up there and up there, when that bone is squishing down, it's, it's squashing a tremendous amount. So let's dial that back down a little bit. Okay, there's still a little bit of that going on. A little bit down. All right, that looks pretty good. Same thing, let's go to our maximum IK stretching. Dial that up. A little bit more. A little bit more. Perfect, okay, so that, that looks perfect. Same thing, we go back to frame zero, click on a select bone, select his head, turn on our animation and let's do the same for the squash on his head so you can see there's no squashing I dial this up to like one there's a lot of squashing and it 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 can work but it doesn't with the volume of this character so I'll dial it back down and around 61 71 it looks like it's the magic number there for that character so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on squash and stretch and using them effectively with Anime Studios tools. Uh, so I'd like to, to give a big thank up you to Mike Morris tenfold. who helped me create the bone later. rig for this character. To support Mike, definitely go to his Facebook page, Anna Mike Art. He's got an awesome Facebook page here that you can go and support. Um, he is the storyboard artist for Disney, soon to have his show released in the summer. Uh, used to be the storyboard artist for The Simpsons. Got a really a lot of cool content on his website. Really awesome guy. Very friendly. Definitely show him some support. Also, if you would like to go to gumroad.com slash McCoyBuck, you can uh, pull up my Gumroad page where you can see all of the rigs that I will be uploading and all of the stuff that you can get. Um, if you want to support the group, uh, you can donate at a certain price. So if you wanted to do like $5, um, it's really easy setup. You just go into your payment. You would put in your information there. It's all secure. And then just enter in your email address. If not, if you wanted to do this for, uh, for, for free because you're a starving artist, you don't have the money, you can totally do that as well. Same thing, it is very simple. All you have to do is just put in your email address and those files will be emailed right to you for you to download. I will be uploading versions 10 and 11 for the rabbit character um, because that does support the tools that we are using. If you wanna follow me, go ahead and enter in your email address. Anytime I send out an update or download, upload a new character, um, you can get that sent straight to your email so you know everything that's going on. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, and comment to let me know what you'd like to see in other videos. Also, be sure to join the Anime Studio Pros Facebook group, a group I created for you to learn, share, and collaborate with other Anime Studio animators. I'll see you later.